Hi, my name is Jonathan Heidenreich, and it's a pleasure to be reading for Sons and Daughters Literary Journal. Um, happy to share with you today a few pieces of work that can be found on the website and a few that can be found on the website. This first one uh, I wrote, it's an early poem, it's one of the more lyrical poems that I have in my collection. Um, it's really an ode to my love of isolation in nature and that coming to grips with the idea that I'm most myself when I'm thrust amidst the green and the gold and the the isolation of nature. So this is one of my earlier sort of love songs to nature, which is always topical for me. It's called Between Trails. It was originally called Between Two Worlds because that was the trail that I wrote it on. Uh, or rather, I wrote while walking, but for brevity's sake, Between Trails. Tread me into warp wood and the honey strum of a hill wind, green kissing gold falling in a folk dance. Birch root, bedfellow, bearded father, sing me the gift of waiting. Grant gills to my memory that thoughts may breach with creek moss and touch the promise of an August. Meadow wedge, milkweed, myth mother, sift me a fire song, sour sweet, from out the blood of berry meat. The sun is folding in. Now, trace my path back in pumpkin skin. It's one of the shorter ones as well. This next one um, came about, you know, in the age of uh, DNA testing and looking back at the stories that come before us and the stories of our own lives and how we can kind of create the narrative of our identity um, and the conflict that can arise when you have familial ties that you identify with but you don't know much about them and the genetic ties that you do know much about you don't have a strong connection to and um, like all great pieces of you know, Gaelic examination it was written while drinking scotch so this is Sipping Ancestry between lacquered roots and the whistling lip of a cairn glass phantoms recently untuned rise and writhe from a dram of green gypsy. Miles of aisles distilled, smoked, oaths from ghost fires twined in tar rope. I envy images. Thistle pricks, bog breath, fairy brine, dragon wings and older things, time before time. Dwelling on unfortunate names, I drum the music of the knuckle bones and see their eyes as clear as moon silk. Kaiser, Culloden, Kilkenny, Calypso, and some place where coats still matter. I had one grandfather shoehorned into a time unkind to mystery, barely born but bastard worn. The mimic of memory has its formula germination, veneration, imitation, tracing fault lines with a sundial, looking beyond to window faces, fogged, smogged, and smeared, clotted knots in milk water, paper smiles roll and smolder. Clutching in mercury and make believe the rest is invention. For on the other side, there is no other side. I wear a name like coffee stains, obvious and inconvenient. A wardrobe of dead ends or bell ends. Let nature return, reaching to the few I remember like me with divining rods, tugging at husks that will not tear. Only there, raw hands find. We are clay and kennings, dream meal measured whole, ground between a mother's thumb and her two sons. Where is inheritance hung? The doctors say I have tall lungs. Sorry for the noise. That's what I get for shooting on location. Um, this next piece is not one that can be found on the website. Those first two uh, can be. Um, this is another ode uh, to a season, um, and since the time is coming up, I thought I would share this one. It's one of the more, it's one of the poems that's had a bit more traction than a few of my other ones, so I thought I would share it with you today because there's no recording of it either. Uh, this one is October. Burn the roses on barge of oak smoke and juniper tears. Wander paths that grow back once a year, cut out in the surgery of December. Leave the leaves as footnotes to remember, only to tear the page with pressing. That place between ancient rites and school nights, 
chasing the moon with orange lights. We make up saints as we go along. The wind is mercantile, selling its spells on a druid's breath. There are months that take the fairy's form, piloting a primrose through a washing storm. July hammers. April keeps its counsel. But you, old amber god, older than others in sense and consequence, you, lost harvest song, sweet fury courting dark mornings, you, thirty-one whispers, watermarks, bolder in death than a cornstalk, memory bound in a crown of clove. Summer's bastard, Bradbury's tomb, winter's mother, and fennel's bloom. Now this one is one of my favorites um, because it's such a reality for me. I wrote this next one uh, after attending a book fair in uh, Pittsburgh where I live and it came about as a distillation of that sense where you have those gaps in life, those little respites where you're doing what you love and you're surrounded and you're in the environment that you love and it's cut short by obligation and responsibility. And this was um, when my partner and I were at a uh, book fair and I had to leave early to attend one of the three jobs that I was juggling just to scrape by. And how memory has a preservative as well as damaging effect and how it can toy with you in those times where you need to focus on the things that you love and those times where it's just kind of torturing you. So this is December Fair at Spirit Hall. Epigraph, epilogue, epitaph. Memory is wilier than sequence. Anthology of waves, aware of itself. Splashing random like freehand filigree. At least it is for me. Often in its teasing, the booksellers appear. Scales of small press, calico of phalanx between firm and fragile. Eyes graze, palms glance. Hesitation is an invitation to dance. Leather spine sweat sugar cane, my fingers snag then clasp with the nagging drag of a rasp. Bury me in such terrarium musk. Paper panels open inward, yellowing, bellowing, cinder king, foxed lips singing, I'll be in the fire if you need me. I reach for Heaney and know myself, overstated and undone, a black light behind the sun. But pity being fibrous pills, catching the bullet train to entropy. Focus goes the way of the Scythians, trampling broadsides with reckless imagining, cataloging what I cannot afford. Born at the end, Piscean, the exit sign, red godhead, leads away from the self, a procession pointing true north, drumming its final tattoo. Underneath, steel teeth cave like column flutes on the Acropolis, finding that light is raw laughter, chambered in direction. Bucking upstream, I draw the hand of Retki in our water, pleading, plunge me further, Father, that I may become a reef without need of memory. Now, when I return to where screams are born, late to the work I hate, blame spreading like arteries and moss agate, I beg to be again crammed in the crawl space between periods. And this last one, if we have time, is a bit of a... You now, I don't do well with um, assignments in terms of my poetry. I kind of let it happen as it happens, and I think fortunately it does happen often. Um, but when given a, you know, an objective, uh, I tend to buck it. So this was my attempt to go to some place where I thought maybe I would, you know, garner some kind of inspiration. So I went to the Carnegie Gallery in Pittsburgh where I live and I spent the afternoon wandering um, the gallery and this is really the distillation of that experience and what I took away. It's also one of my earlier poems as well. Gallery. My lady wants a walk. She says, I want the poet's grave. She opens the door for a thousand obscurities, a thousand he once wases, a hundred leaning arms, tens of empty vows, and a smile if the sun stays quiet. I watch my lady tread. 
She eats the air of gods while others wheeze on words. Her lips command. Etruscan pillars stand. I chew skin with the ancients. In the parlor, she leans on vellum of a Christian calf and asks, where have they hid the French? Eden's irrigation couldn't quench the thirst we knew, leading parched eyes to Gothic altars. I found an hour to dream in tones. Scarlet leaves a taste like permanence. My lady dances with the revival and settles into petals where impressions leave no less than themselves. But our day was led astray by heavy breathing cataracts. Whistler followed fast and followed faster till our song one burden bore, modernity. To slither through its mausoleum, catching shards from fallen spheres, we lose our taste for amnesty. Who wouldn't cringe at an old man's smile to learn your dreams are timed? To the sea I scream with open eyes, why must we bleed for constancy? She brings me back. She breathes the patterns against a broken canvas, my lady's eyes. She meets the storm and smirks and whispers, my lady's eyes. The reaching walls and wide hours splinter to a violent truth. There are no lies in the Baroque, my lady's eyes. We leave with our tickets.